Following the admission of Oklahoma to the Union, the United States government continued the devastating and failed era of termination, seeking to weaken the sovereignty of Indian tribes in Oklahoma. The United States resisted the continuance of the government-to-government -government relationship that it had shared with the Cherokee Nation for decades. The U.S. limited their governmental interaction with tribes, but if it needed a Cherokee representative to sign land deeds or other legal agreements, the President of the United States would appoint a chief of the Cherokee Nation. These appointments would usually last for only one day, gleaning them the nickname Chief for a Day. Jesse Bartley, or J.B. Milam, was one such appointed chief. However, he was the first to serve as a presidential appointee more than once. Born in 1884, Milam lived in the Kui Skui district of the Cherokee Nation in Indian Territory. Milam attended the Cherokee Male Seminary and became an accomplished banker and oil man. His first foray into tribal politics began in 1938 as a group of 300 Cherokees met in a national council to discuss matters relating to them as a people. Here, a committee representing the nine districts of the Cherokee Nation elected J.B. Milam as chairman of the council. In this position, Milam began to pursue land claims related to the flooding of Cherokee land as government agencies were creating Grand Lake. Soon, the federal government recognized the need to appoint another chief of the Cherokees to represent the tribe in these land claims. And in 1941, President Franklin Roosevelt named J.B. Milam to a one-year appointment as principal chief of the Cherokees. Milam took advantage of this assignment and used his position to pursue additional land claims. He fought to recover land taken from Cherokees to build Camp Gruber near Braggs, Oklahoma during World War II. He also began purchasing land for the Cherokee Nation and over time bought more than 21,000 acres for the tribe. J.B. Milam was appointed to serve three more times by Presidents Roosevelt and Harry S. Truman. During that time, he worked to unite all Native people to build strength and power even though their governments had been weakened. And so, Milam was a founding member of what is now the longest standing intertribal organization, the National Congress of American Indians. J.B. Milam also championed the study of Cherokee heritage and culture, personally funding scholarly pursuits of Cherokee history. In fact, he fronted half the cost of an expedition to Mexico, searching for the grave of Cherokee statesman Sequoia. These documents show Milam's personal notes on the topic. Milam was also instrumental in revitalizing the instruction of the Cherokee language in area schools and colleges and it was his idea to buy the site of the original Cherokee Female Seminary and build a Cherokee Heritage Center there. Over the years, Milam recovered various artifacts and items of Cherokee historical significance from the federal government and secured them for future generations. Milam amassed such an astounding personal library of Cherokee and Native American papers and books that today it makes up a significant portion of the University of Tulsa McFarland Library's Native American collection. J.B. Milam died in 1949 while still in office. At his death, the Cherokee Nation had been weakened by the decades of failed federal policies dealing with Indian tribes. However, the passage of the Indian Self-Determination Act in the 1970s revived the recognition of sovereign status of tribal governments and the revitalization of the modern Cherokee Nation. It's a nation shaped in many ways by the work of Chief J.B. Milam. <laughs>